Coach Ferentz. A reminder, tomorrow is Women's Wrestling Media Day, um, 9 a.m. in the Feller Club Room at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Tomorrow's assistant coach will be Kelvin Bell, 11 o'clock on Zoom. Uh, we put out the black and gold spirit game map uh, yesterday, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, we'd appreciate it if you'd help spread the word on that as far as fans wearing black and gold clothing and what section they're, they're sitting in. Um, regarding next week, um, we're still talking about things that we're going to do next week, so we'll share with that with you later uh, this week. Uh, today, just a heads up, we'll only have a transcript for Coach Ferentz. We will not have a transcript for Brian Balaga, just Coach Ferentz. And then after Brian speaks, um, everyone's welcome. Uh, we'll do a photo shoot over in the northwest corner of Kinnick Stadium with Brian and his banner. Uh, so uh, with that, we'll get to Coach Ferentz. First of all, just great to have Brian and his family back. I'll talk about that in a second. But, um, you know, good afternoon. Appreciate everybody being here. Uh, certainly it's a good weekend. And I want to congratulate Coach Baluter and the women's basketball team. Sounds like it's just a great event out there, the crossover at Kinnick. And, um, you know, what a fantastic concept. I don't know whose idea. I think it might have been Lisa's, actually. But uh, just a great concept. Uh, you can see from the windows we were up here getting our stuff cleaned up. And uh, just a lot of activity outside there so it was neat to neat to see that and sounds like it just went really well so great experience for everybody involved certainly and uh the children's hospital benefits from it so it's even a bigger bonus there so just a really nice uh nice nice uh, uh activity on sunday and certainly a good weekend for us happy about the victory it was hard fought and uh made the ride home a lot easier on saturday night so just really proud of our football team on that regard um, I want to congratulate Tori Taylor, uh, second straight week, Big Ten Special Teams Player of the Week. And uh, obviously he's having a great senior year. He was a you know, huge difference in the game the other night, big impact uh, on, on the game. And has just you know, done a great job all season long and also does a great job holding for Drew on the field goals. And that uh, those two things really played a big, big factor in the outcome of the game the other day. So uh, just, you know, again, happy about the performance I said the other night. Team was certainly determined. They fought, competed hard out there. The staff had a great plan and then adjusted as the game went on. Uh, a couple of circumstances there. So uh, just all in all, you know, good, uh, a good outing for us. Uh, typical Big Ten game, you know, just a hard-fought ball game, physical, uh, highly contested all three phases. And, you know, I think that's uh, certainly the message as we move forward now, playing another rivalry game. Uh, Big Ten team who is also big physical and, does a great job. So got our work cut out again. It's really the same messaging as it was a week ago for us. Uh, moving on to the game, captains are the same four guys. Got uh, Joe Evans and uh, Jay Higgins defensively, and on offense, uh, Luke Lachey and uh, Cade McNamara are the guys. So uh, they'll continue to be our captains. Uh, on a you know sad note, unfortunately, uh, Eric Hall looks like his season's over. Uh, you know, we're worried about that on Saturday and. Uh, you know, the test confirmed that. So he's going to miss the rest of the year. It's just really unfortunate. And he's done a, a great job, you know, a newcomer to the team, just a great, great addition, such a positive guy, hardworking, great personality, and just really loves the game, loves everything about the game, not just the game itself. And, uh, you know, I hate to lose anybody and certainly feel badly for Eric in that regard. He was certainly adding a lot for our football team. And, um, you know, it's just it's a tough deal. So we'll all support him in his recovery, his road back, and, you know, certainly uh, hope all that goes well. Uh, turning the page to Minnesota, as I alluded to, it's just, you know, it's a real challenge for us. You know, a really good football team, and traditionally our games have been really hard fought. Coach Flux done a great job building a, a very successful, stable program. They certainly have an identity, and good teams do. So, you know, that, that's really what you're looking at when you look across the field. Uh, they continue to be a big physical group offensively. Uh, names change, but the uh, pattern stays pretty similar. Just to, they run the ball extremely well, uh, ran the ball really well against us last year, as good as anybody has in a long, long time. So that's certainly something we're going to have to be uh, focused on. Uh, our conference, a lot of good defensive teams in our conference, and last several years Minnesota's added to that. They've been extremely 
uh, tough to move the ball against and score against. So do a good job there, and they're they're good on special teams on top of that, like you'd expect. So um, you know that's that's what they look like. Uh, they're coming off the bye. I'm sure they'll be well prepared, well rested. So you know. Long story short, just like another another uh, tough challenge. It'd be great to be in Kinnick, certainly, but we're gonna have to do our our work on that one. So, last two points are just you know the kid captain. Um, I know it's a border rivalry, and I guess we're we're doing our best to uh, reach reach across a little bit. Uh, Bentley Erickson's our our uh, kid captain, a 12 year old from Brainerd, Minnesota, actually. But I think when it comes to the you know the kids' hospital, there really is no uh, boundaries on that. Everybody's really supportive and. Um, you know, his story, Bentley's story is kind of interesting. He was born at 31 weeks, uh, was, was uh, moved down to the Stead uh, Hospital here five days into his life and uh, in his lifetime has experienced 20 surgeries. And now, as I understand, it's a really healthy, vibrant uh, 12-year-old Xbox expert, as I've been told. And uh, sounds like he and George Kittle have a little elder respect, Brian. Uh, but the guy, he and George Kittle got a little something going right now, too. So I think George has a pretty good fan club, and it's growing uh, you know, weekly. So uh, it'd be great to have uh, Bentley here with his family and just uh, look forward to having them uh, in Kinnick, certainly. And then last but not least, just uh, again, want to welcome uh, Brian and congratulate him. Uh, he and his uh, wife, Abby, are here and their two children, and his family will be coming into town here at the end of the week. So I know it's just a really special occasion. Uh, and I, I just, uh, you know, the ANF relationship has been absolutely fantastic for us now, uh, coming up on 30 years, I guess. Just, you know, great, great, great relationship that way, Coach Fry's uh, idea in the onset. But, you know, just talking about Brian a little bit. Uh, you know, he, he was just uh, such a great addition to our program when he decided to come here. Uh, I remember in the recruitment, we kind of took a shot and told him we'd be glad to have him as a tight end, glad to have him as a defensive player. Uh, but I remember having a conversation really with him, just that, you know, really thought his, his future might be in the offensive line. And I don't know if that's smart or not, you know, because most kids run like hell when you say something like that. And he kind of gravitated towards that. So I don't know if that made the difference in recruiting. But, um, you know, fortunately, he came here, had, had uh, success right off the bat. Uh, we, we didn't play him, start him in our first game. We were in uh, Soldier Field, actually, back in his hometown. Didn't play him, and uh, but, or excuse me, did play him, didn't start him. We were going to play him the next week, and he hurt his shoulder. And the one thing I always remember about him in his first year, he was out a couple of weeks, but when he came back, he, he picked up a stunt in a Tuesday practice. I can tell you exactly where I was standing. I just remember it so vividly. And uh, he made the pickup. And it just it impressed me so much for a guy who's not only has been out for three weeks, but uh, as a first-year player, and it just taught me, like, this guy was wired in. He was paying attention, even though he wasn't out there practicing like this guy. Either that or he's really lucky. Well, history, history proved that, uh, you know, he was paying attention because that's just how he operated. Had good physical skills, but uh, really had the mindset. It's hard for a first-year guy to come in here and play in this conference and play well, and he did it right off the bat. And had a great career with us, and uh, obviously went on, had a great pro career with Green Bay, and um, finished up down in, uh, with the Chargers. But the only thing I would just add to it, if you look at some of the guys that uh, Ted Thompson picked up there in uh, Green Bay during his uh, tenure up there, you think about Aaron Campman, Matt Bowen. Uh, more recently, you take a guy like Mike Daniels or Micah Hyde, and then Brian was in, in between there. And it's kind of like Bill Pulling with the Colts. You know, cer certain teams just seem to be wired into our guys, and, and Really had a good uh, good feel for him, and Brian is a good example of that. Just like he, you know, he played for us as a freshman uh, and a rookie. Uh, his rookie year ends up getting a Super Bowl ring. Started, I think, ten games. I don't know if I'm, my math is right on it. Ten games, maybe your rookie year. Get right tackle in the huddle with Aaron Rodgers. So, uh, and a big part of the reason they were world champions. So, had an outstanding career here. Even more illustrious career as an NFL player, and uh, most importantly, just an outstanding person. And when you look at that wall and the recipients that have gone into the um, uh, Farm Bureau Hall of Fame, it's just, it's really impressive. So Brian certainly belongs there. So congratulations, uh, Brian, you and your family. Just say that real quickly, and I'll throw it off for questions. Wyatt had a sling, I think, after after the game. Can we get an update on his stats? And then Aston Stringa, Jazz Patterson, kind of where, where are they at right now in the recovery? Yeah, um, yeah so Patterson, I think, is going to be okay. He's practicing. Looks like he's okay. So Jazz, uh, hopefully, will join us. Um, Eddie practiced today, partial practice, so optimistic, but we'll see how the week goes. Uh, why, we'll wait and see, but it's, you know, we'll see. With Eric, um, with the ACL tear, I'm assuming yeah. that's going uh, need surgery. What yep. is kind of his recovery timeline for that? 
It, it takes a while, you know, whatever, uh, six, eight, ten months, you know, somewhere. So it's, it's significant. It's just it's unfortunate. Yeah. Are you guys holding out hope that maybe Lachey comes back at some point, maybe bowl game or something like that? Yeah, I, I talked to him yesterday about being back for, after the bye, uh, jokingly. Okay, for the record, jokingly, and he, he just smiled. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I, you, you can't count on it. It's just hard to predict. Um, there, you know, the window's open for that maybe, you know, sometime in December, but – it's, it's certainly not, you know, for sure. What about Noah Shannon's situation now? Any additional feedback? from? Well, he looks good in pads, and he practices well. Uh, that hasn't changed. He's got fresh legs, too, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I think we're just, we're just waiting on the NCAA, so hopefully they'll do the right thing. And how soon that's going to be, if it's one call, two calls, I don't know. So that's okay. I mean, time's ticking. He's getting older. All of us are getting older, and uh, hopefully it's sooner than later they make a decision. I say it jokingly. It's, it's really not very funny. In fact, it's not funny at all, but, um, yeah, we'll see. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't have any firm, firm debt on what's going to happen or when. Realistically, is Wrigley Field game maybe the ballpark? I mean, unless they well, call you tomorrow. Or... Yeah, I, if they call tomorrow, it would be great. Um, to me, they probably could have done it in June. That's, that's my looking at this whole thing, uh, but that's discussion for a different day too. So, you know, if they wanted to call tomorrow, it would be outstanding. We'll have them out there Saturday if they do. I don't, I'm not, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen. If Black can't go, I mean, you obviously have Logan Lee and Aaron Graves at D-tackle. What are mm -hmm. your next options? We've seen Pittman a little. Yep. Um, that's the next guy. Would yep. you move anyone inside potentially or to be De – Deontay Craig's played there in the past. But, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're nicked up a little bit. I mean, we've you know, played seven games and got a lot of guys that are – uh, you know, playing with soreness and pain, that, that's part of the game, unfortunately, just like guys getting hurt. And that, that's, I don't, I don't say it in a callous way, it's just the reality of what we do. And it's, um, you know, so we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll just, you know, get 60 more minutes to play here and then we'll regroup next week. You are banged up. I mean, I know every team is, I understand yep. that. But you got one game before the bye, so you get, and you're coming off an emotional win. So what's kind of the message to the team here um, to try to, Kind of limp to the finish line, so well, you know, a while back I just talked to the guys about an eight-week season, and it's really what it is. And um, you know, I, I don't know about anybody else, but I wasn't smart enough to know eight weeks ago what it was going to look like today uh, or seven weeks ago, I guess. So, you know, you just take it a week at a time. You try to take it a day at a time and assess where you're at. Yeah, and it's all about survival, really. I mean, that's that's what Saturday was about, and that's what this week will be about. Very similar type game, and. Um, it, it is, yeah, we are coming off an emotional win. But, you know, I mean, every week's like the, it's pretty much the same story each and every week. So that, that's part of the challenge that's built in. Can you get up and get back working on Sunday and transition into the next game the next week? Uh, you're always going to have challenges. We're always going to have guys that are achy or, you know, painful or a little tired, all that kind of stuff. And, um, and we just try to be as proactive as we can about, you know, recovery, rest, all those things that, you know, we all know we're supposed to do sometimes. We don't do it, especially if you're in college. Uh, just try to get every edge you can so you can be at your best on Saturday. But, um, you know, that, that's, that's what we're trying to do right now. And that next week is, is next week. It's a late buy, so we'll handle it appropriately and what have you. But, you know, really our, our focus has been on finishing this eight-week block, and that's, that's really what it is right now. What, is your what did you think of the uh, physicality of the run game, the offensive line against Wisconsin, and sort of how they've grown this season? Yeah, I think I've been saying that. I think I've seen improvement. We've we've seen improvement. All of us have uh, in the last four or five weeks, I guess, and three weeks maybe, I guess, whenever you know we started the second four game uh, deal. And uh, you know, it shows up in different ways. But I, I think we're getting a little bit more mature now. We're operating a little bit better together and uh, having a better feel. And you know, certainly the run game was huge for us the other night. And that we'll be a better football team if we can run the ball successfully. It's you know, it's never uh, easy, but you know, it's. Uh, you know, it, it certainly helps you, and uh, hopefully guys are gaining confidence when, when good things do happen. They should feel a little bit more confident. The backs, you know, especially LeSean, really ran the ball well, and um, you know, we created some room for him, so he did something with it. And even the long run, that wasn't a clean play. Like, you know, there was some, some bobbing and weaving going on there, but that, that's the way the run game is, and you got you got to make something happen. If you're a back, there's typically going to be somebody you're going to have to, you know, put a move on or break a tackle or whatever, and... Uh, you know, that's just that's the way the nature of the game. But it's encouraging. What's the what status? The, uh, what's the status of De, uh, Deshaun Lee and T.J. Hall? Um, Hall's not going to make it this week for sure. Deshaun, we'll see. Yeah, it's same thing, kind of, you know, day by day. Yep. For their 
backups, Brendan Diaz, Fernandez, and, and Devin Hilson. What's your level of, of confidence in them and just in the potential of them stepping in and, uh, and playing? Oh, yeah, I mean, level of confidence. I'd be more confident if they'd started 20 games in their careers, you know, like everybody. I'm flashing back right now to I think we started two freshman corners, whatever it was, up in Minneapolis. Uh, they had the two good receivers. Didn't sleep so Riley Moss was one of them. Uh, you know, one of great was it Brent's too, I think, right, Julius, I believe. So, you know, I didn't sleep so well that Friday night, but those guys did great and we won the game. Uh, that, that's, you know, it's an opportunity for the guys that haven't played a lot. That's, we talk to them about that all the time. And uh, both Brendan and Devin are doing good jobs on special teams. That's reassuring to see guys out doing things, contributing to the, the team, uh, doing well. And I know Devin had a penalty the other night. Uh, that, to me, was inexperienced. Um, you know, you get mad a little bit but because, uh, you know, we couldn't afford an industry the other night. But at the same time, I've, I've been watching him, pr- you know, all of us have been watching him improve and progress as a young guy who who's aggressive and, um, you know, so he's really improved as a football player. So, you know, penalty, it's a learning experience the other night, but I think he made some really good plays too for us. And, you know, so hopefully at some point that's going to tra- transition in the defensive play. It's kind of been the history of guys around here. But uh, I'd be fine if our starters got to play the whole game. I'd be okay with me. With the tight end injuries adding up, what have you seen from Steven Stilianos this last month? Oh, same thing. I mean, you know, I think I mentioned, you know, I thought he was one of our most improved guys last spring. And it's the same, same topic. Um, you know, technically we were playing with four, five, and six at tight end the other night, three guys that were out there. So, again, you probably went to sleep well going in, into the game knowing that was the case. But those guys all played. You know, he did a good job. Johnny did a nice job. And uh, Ortworth's in the Army now. So, you know, as of uh, last Saturday, he's in there playing. And I thought he did a good job for the first time out there. So, uh, but it's, it's because they practice well. And again, talking about Steve, you know, we, we said said that in the spring. I thought he's probably one of our more improved guys on the team. Last year was was a, a transition year for him. And uh, but in the spring, you could see him operating. Hey, you know, like this is a guy who can help us play and help us be successful. And you know, he's going to be called upon to, to do more now as we move forward. That, has there been any thought to move a March back out more to tight end, or have you liked him too much fullback? Yeah, no, he's got that flexibility. He certainly, I mean, we're, we're out of guys, so he'll definitely get work there. Um, uh, so he's probably one of the four guys getting work, and he's he's a smart guy, so he can do both. And, um, you know, but they're not like the three guys that weren't playing or were playing, I guess. That's kind of the difference right now. So we're just playing catch up in that regard. And, and to your point, you know, uh, he played fullback more the other night. You know, we ended up using that personnel group a little bit more than we probably anticipated. You know, I thought he did a really nice job for – that was really his first extensive playing out there and uh, really pleased with what we saw. It's encouraging. You guys sit at 6-1. and one. <coughs> you know, We don't need to sit here and spout off the stats, difference between special teams, defense, and offense. But, you know, talking to some of the offensive players, talking to the team, taking a look at the season, it really feels like there's a strong sense of leadership – in this group that's allowed the, the locker room to be so united. I mean, you, you just wouldn't be able to guess, you know, the stats are what the stats are. But what can you say about the leadership of this group, especially coming off, you know, the Penn State game? They, Joe Evans said that he loved the body language in the locker room after the game because he knew that the group was ready to fight back. Yeah, I mean, we did it last year, and uh, things were probably a little bit more dire, although, you know, it felt pretty bad four weeks ago. I don't mind telling you, like, that's just there's no, no way to sugarcoat a game like that. Uh, it's not fun to go through, as I said back then, and uh, you try like hell to avoid those moving forward. Uh, but, you know, that, that's what the game's all about. It's responding, and our, our players are smart. They know what's going on. Uh, they know where our challenges are. They know, you know, what things looked like in August, what they look like now. Uh, but, you know, despite as much everybody wants to predict the future, you can't do that. You just never know how seasons are going to go, what, what turns are going to be taken, Who's going to be in? Who's going to be out? And uh, you know, if you if you got a true team, guys just work with the circumstances and situation, and they stay together. And uh, hey, if this path's not going to work, let's try this one. Let's try that one. There's a lot of ways to win football games, and that's uh, kind of been the theme for 20 some years. I mean, we're just trying to find a way to win. That's really what the game's about. And if you can come out victorious on Saturday and do it, you know, over and over, then you know you can feel good about things. So that's that's. Uh, but there's no way to predict how it's going to be great if, you know, hey, we'll do this, we'll do that, and, you know, we'll this and that. And I mean, we, we weren't counting these guys running the ball for 300 last year, I'll promise you that. And, you know, I made, I made for a long day. It was hard. It's really hard when that's going on. Coach, you made a concerted effort to make sure the team does everything together, and obviously the swarm since 1979. The coach lets the players lead the team onto the field. Can you just remind me, why is that, and why is that so important to do things as a unit? 
Yeah, I mean, two, two of the best traditions uh, you'll see in Kinnick Stadium, in my opinion, um, or if we go on the road, which we can't take the wave on the road, but uh, both those are, to me, as good as it gets. And uh, that, that's, you know, that was Coach Fry's baby all the way. Yeah, and I, I thought it just it made so much sense. And I know our opponents made fun of us. At least they did in the 70s or 80s. I don't know if they do anymore. But, um, you know, just what it stood for, what it meant, you know, that, that was how he built the program here. So, you know, as long as I'm here, that, that's going to continue. And uh, it is important. We, we swarmed really poorly in 04 down in Tempe, Arizona. And it's funny how things work. You know, it's about how we played, too. We couldn't even swarm right and couldn't take a team picture in 1999. Uh, went back and redid that on a Saturday night during camp. I mean, that that's – so it's funny, little things sometimes to really carry over to bigger things. Uh, but that, yeah, it's just a great tradition. And, again, I'm not taking any credit for that, and I'm not taking credit for the wave at all. We just get to participate, and it. it's really – uh, both of them stand for something. I think it's really, really neat, and you know, all of us can be proud of that. That for sure. Kirk, I know in, in some in seasons like this, you know, you kind of throw some of the stats out and not ignore them. But 27 to 70 for your quarterback is a little bit of is a tough one to probably digest. How do you get him? How do you get a higher completion percentage for Deacon and what throw it more accurately and catch it better? I mean, it's, it's real and protect better. But it's. Those are the things. It just, and I, and I, I'm not even aware of those stats, quite frankly. Um, I know this. We didn't turn it over the other night. I know that. He had something to do with that. So, uh, you know, you just take it take it as it is, you know. And uh, we're just trying to focus on his improvement, too, a little bit better tempo, uh, this, that, you know, footwork, whatever it may be. And, um, you know, but first things first, don't get us in trouble. Don't make bad decisions. Don't press. Don't, you know, all the things that – you know, you lose games real quickly if, if you start doing some things. And so taking care of that. And then, you know, just the, the, the offensive stuff, you know, it'll come when it comes. And, it you know, we're working at it just as hard as we would in a good statistical year. And, um, you know, so it's not like your approach really changes a hell of a lot. It's just a matter of, um, you know, everything working together, I guess. That's about – that's my experience in football at least. How far would you say that Joey – Joe Labus, who did start a bowl game and mm – -hmm won that game, didn't have a turnover that day. Yep. Um, how far would you say the, the separation is between those two? I, I don't know if I want to put a gauge on it. And really, game action determines everything eventually. But I, I just say this. I know that discussion floated out there last year. And I think, you know, I hate to say this in a negative way, but I think uh, we all saw, you know, when Petrus got knocked out, we saw maybe why we were playing Petrus. And, you know, I went through that discussion last year. I mean, Petrus was our quarterback in 20. It looked pretty good with him playing back there. You know, offense is a team thing. It takes a lot of things to go together to make it work. Defense is the same way. I mean, it's really uh, a lot of intricate things that work together or don't work together, and it's a very delicate thing. So, um, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into it. But, I mean, right now it's, it's clear that we have a one and a two and a three, and then we'll, you know, we'll just kind of go through there. And if it – What have you seen from Castro the last year? And what dimension – or what – Factor does it add when you have such a sound tackler at safety? <laughs> yeah, I mentioned it the other, uh, the other night. Um, I mean, the good things in football, and just to, you know, much show them the, from the other night, Drew Stevens coming back from a uh, not so good game, day, you know, two, ten days ago, whatever it is now, and coming back and playing great Saturday. Um, think about that. You think about Lee Sean in the Michigan State game, and he came back in that game. In his defense, fourth quarter, he, he really played and helped us win the game. Um, and then, you know, certainly really helped the other night. So, you know, guys getting off the mat, that, that's one story. And then, you know, in Sebastian's case, uh, in our program, historically, mentioned Brian playing as a freshman. Wasn't the case for Sebastian, but he, he played special teams in his career. Just wasn't clicking for him defensively. And then last year, at the end of the last year, it's when it started clicking. And he's, he's played well all season long. It was huge the other night. So it, it's fun to watch players because you don't know – it's going to be their fourth year, fifth year, third year, first year. You know, you just never know when a guy's going to start to um, have success. And sometimes it never really comes the way that would you hope. But the, the common denominator is, you know, just guys working hard, giving all they can give. And, and Sebastian's a tough-minded guy. Boy, he's physical and tough out there in the field. But just now he's getting confidence. He's really starting to feel good about what he's doing. And um, I'm not going to say it's his best play, but just the, the fact that, you know, he hit the ground after the, you know, he got the game winner and, um, you know, selfish guy would have tried to score or whatever. Uh, but, you know, he had, he had that wherewithal just to hit the ground, game over, we're going home, you know, start the bus, and here we go. So I think that says a lot about him, too. It really does. And 
I'm not sure he would have done that three years ago, but that that's maturity, and that's just really like getting it and understanding what it takes. One of the questions was uh, listed as the starting running back this week. Yeah, Remember, it, what yeah. Well, it had something to do with that 82-yard run or whatever it was. I mean, you know, shit, that was uh, – pardon my French, but, you know, like that was a big play for us. Uh, no, but, I mean, he, he ran the ball extremely well. And, it, you know, we got faith in all of our guys, including the two young guys. You know, and they may be in there Saturday too. You never know. Uh, I mean, the way this year is going, uh, you know. So, anyway, uh, I don't think we're going to call Sam Brownlee back, but um, it, 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 it's just, you know. But he, he, he seized an opportunity and went with it, and that's, that's good for him. And, you know, it might be the week before uh, Caleb was the guy who, you know, was being anointed. So, all, all these, you know, these guys are all going to have to help us play. And we're going to have to run the ball if we're going to win. There's no question about that. He brought up, uh, he brought up 04. He brought up Sam Brownlee just mm-hmm. now. Does this year kind of, in some ways, with all the injuries, remind you of 04? Yeah, in, in some ways, yeah, in some ways. But it, it's different, too. But, um but the commonality is like that's football. It just it you know I know I got in trouble saying that in fourteen, uh, but it is football. You, you just don't know. You can't predict it, and that's why I get such a. I'm so amused with these programs in the summer, uh, and it's an industry, and it's a, you know I mean guys have jobs. That's great. I'm all for the economy, uh, but but like you can't predict the future. You just can't predict it. You just don't know what's going to happen. Uh, so you know the bottom line is you better be flexible. You better find a way when something does happen and. Uh, it kind of goes back to the point about, you know, the team has to understand that. they got to understand that, um, you know, there are different things that happen that affect or impact the way the game might go. So it's just, you know, law of compensation. If we're a little bit weak over here, then this department, that department, this department better step it up a little bit until we get, you know, get caught up in the other area. So but that, that's the fun part, you know, because these guys do get it. They care about each other, and, uh, you know, they understand there's some, you know, give and take with everything that we do. So it's, it's all good. Rivalry aspects aside, I mean, these two teams that you play and have played every year forever for 100 years, uh, they tend to, uh, they're so physical, and they take a real toll on you and you, you on them as well. Yeah. Um, was that ever, <laughs> the schedule the schedule, but when you looked at it the first time, went, oh, boy, that, that's going to be tough to play anybody, let alone Minnesota, right after Wisconsin. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, overall, I'm, I'm not a big one on analyzing schedules because um, – First of all, we have nothing to do with them other than the, the non-league games. And then, you know, you play what you play. It's, it's laid out there, and it's luck of the draw and all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm happy our bye week's eight. I think I'd rather have it eight than four. Uh, I think that's a good thing. But, um, um, you, know, you know, it's just, again, it gets back to our league. Like, that's the way our league is. So chances are you're going to be playing some teams week to week to week that are, you know, the Michigan State game was a physical game, too. Those guys came in here and played hard, and, you know, I think our guys played hard. So... You just got to deal with it, and I think where, where you have to adjust is you know what you're doing. Mentioned you know trying to educate the players about the value of what they do in their personal lives, and then we have to be responsible to as coaches and, and make sure we're practicing in a way that gives our guys a chance to get back to you know um, where they can play at their t- a top level here Saturday. And if we had four straight more after that, that's our job to try to control that. But again, you got to keep educating the players too that they got some ownership in it as well. Okay, okay. thanks guys. Thanks for Thank All right, at this time, I'll introduce Marty Schwager, Executive Director of the Iowa Farm Bureau. who will come up and say a few words and then introduce our 2023 ANF Wall of Honor recipient. Marty?